set up now to do some testing. I'm trying to probe around, get some signals and see what's going on. I've recapped basically everything. There's still a few capacitors I haven't changed yet. There's like one big one on the power supply over here to have changed. I don't have the right capacitor for that, it's a high voltage one. There's also that metal cap underneath the transformer under here, which is behind it, tugged underneath. I haven't changed that either. That also may need doing. I've replaced every other capacitor basically, apart from some of the tantalums. There was one tantalum I replaced because it tested quite high ESR. Capacitance looked okay, but ESR was like 23 ohms. All I actually had was a dip tantalum for that. I think it was at 0.9 ohms versus 23 ohms, so I swapped that out in case that mattered, but that was on the A6 board over here, it goes up to the aluminium block for there. So I've got this hooked up. I'm just going to demonstrate something I'm seeing here. So I've got my junk tech signal generator here set up to doing 2.828 volts peak to peak which is a 1 volt RMS. I don't know if I did video or not before on this, doing testing, I can't remember if I did or not, but I may have actually had this set wrong. I think I said it at peak voltage, not peak to peak voltage. So if I did that wrong, oops, sorry. <laughs> so it's 2.828 volts, peak to peak, is equivalent to 1 volt RMS, because you have to divide it by 0.3535 or something. So I hooked up to this capacitor here, which is I think it's either C413 or C415. There's two caps here which join together. They're actually the output from this board. According to the manual here, which I'm using, the very first step is to hook up to those points and measure between 240 millivolts and 280 millivolts RMS. So I'm going to turn the output on and make sure I'm on the right range on here. I am. It has to be a one volt range. You can see, with no input, I'm getting a half scale all the time. Doesn't matter what range I'm on, I'm getting half scale. But it is responding to voltages, so... 200 millivolts of division. Here we're getting RMS of 280, well 279 millivolts RMS. So that is in spec, that's actually meeting that criteria. So that test point there looks fine. Now what I wanted to show you is that I'm getting a half scale reading all the time, okay? So if I turn the upper back off again, if there was an actual signal at this point, which we've generated in a half scale reading, I would be seeing about 140 millivolts RMS sitting there. I'm not, I'm seeing 14. Now this is actually graduated on the meter and known in the manual as well. That anything below one tenth scale is basically useless. You, you tend to get a floating reading around that level because of the sensitivity of this thing. So one tenth scale is useless. And so at this point on the upper the A4 board, it looks fine. It isn't here. So in the very back of this manual here, it's got this fold out. This is like the very last pages, which is the original board, which was in this particular unit. So the actual model number of this board is 03400, which is obviously the unit's model number, hyphen 66504. And that is the number on this board right here. There are different versions of this board depending on what year this thing was produced. And the very fold out in the very back is the original one for this board here. So this is the one I've got to look at. There is a second fold out in here with the other main diagrams, which is the newer version, um, which doesn't apply to this particular board or this particular version of this. 1965 is when this one was made. This manual here is from 66 year later. It's very slightly different, but I need to look at the A6 board and see what's going on there. The next step asks to hook up to C605 on the positive side of that capacitor, which is where it goes into the aluminium block. And it says the waveform should look like that. That's what we're getting. It's similar. It's similar. So as far as voltages go, it should be nearly three volts peak to peak, and we're getting just over two, just over two volts peak to peak there. It's not quite the same. Timing's slightly different. The waveform is very slightly lower. I'm a little bit suspicious about that. See, what I think I should be seeing here, it's just lower level here, that's where it's ramping up. I think this should be down here, right? That would correct that timing. So it's almost as though it's being pulled up here. I think this is the issue, right there. I think that's what's wrong. This should be down as a low state, and then coming up, and that would fix that timing problem. It also costs one more to the illustration inside the manual, with this being low. That might also mean it pull down lower, which would create the amplitude issue. So I think this is the problem here. This is being pulled up too soon, is a clue. So I'm gonna show you where I was hooked up to just now. So there's that A6 block, and just in there is a the capacitor. Just there, and I'm on the positive leg of that capacitor, just here, like that. Okay, that's where the test point is. So, the next thing it asks me to do is to disconnect the red wire from inside here. No input on here, no input at all. Disconnect the red wire, which is on pin 13 of the socket down here. I think I could probably sh show you, maybe. Well, no, down there. Hooked onto this probe 
here onto that pin onto the socket it says to inject 10 millivolts through a 499k resistor so here's my 499k resistor in this box here and 10 millivolts is going to generate with the PDVS2 mini I'm going to use this to generate that and it tells us to check for another waveform and confirm that waveform is correct so we're going to do that now so this is the waveform we should see this time with 10 millivolts injected in all right so that's what we should get 8 volts peak to peak because it's 2 volts per division so nearly 8 volts peak to peak similar kind of waveform like one division one half divisions per waveform so I'll supply power first it takes about a minute or so to warm up here we go we're getting something coming out I'm not injecting a voltage yet I'm giving it a chance to settle down that's currently pegging full scale let's inject a voltage that's 10 millivolts and we're not getting what we think we should be getting if I increase the voltage we're starting to get something if I do 100 millivolts then I'm starting to get the waveform it could be to do with the current that's required to do this test let me just see what the current actually is so I've got this going through my Siglent multimeter here to see what's going on so I've got it set at 0 volts output let's go to 10 millivolts and we're seeing about 0 0.01 microamps at 10 millivolts on this injected voltage I'm doing here so if I do 50 millivolts we're starting to see a waveform popping up that's about 0 0.06 microamps if we go up to 100 millivolts we're getting a nice waveform that's about 0 0.1 microamps not much power being talked about there is there so basically let's make them put in 10 times the voltage it expects the next step is to connect up to Q602 and the same test again basically except I've got different scaling on the meter here it's now doing uh, 500 millivolts per division and I'm injecting 10 millivolts as requested through that resistor again I should be getting basically a square wave which is on the negative side this is now DC coupled and I'm not getting a square wave if I increase the voltage we'll see if it turns up into a square wave see it's starting to turn into one but it's very noisy so 100 millivolts was where I was getting a decent waveform before on the other output now we're getting kind of a square wave this is still really noisy this does not look right that is a way higher level than it should be now I've dropped it down to 10 millivolts again we've got one up to 100 came back down to 10 now we're kind of seeing a square wave so yeah something's definitely going on here well, I'm recording this part again because I've decided to redo it. So I'm now at step number four where I've desoldered red wire and injecting a 10 millivolt signal. Now the magical manual here says to inject 10 millivolts through a 499 kilo ohm resistor from the 738BR which is a HP calibrator. It's a really old calibrator because this thing's from the 60s so it's not surprising. Now what I've been finding, I'm using the PDVS2 mini to inject 10 millivolts through this and 499 if I go up to 400 I'm just getting lots of noise here right so that's 410 K right now yeah that's just garbage that's not usable but if I bring down to say 10 K instead that's absolutely fine if I go down to 0 K so that's straight in no resistance still fine so I think this reference in the manual about the 499 K is purely because of that particular test equipment setup so I'm just going to use a 10k series resistor now and that seems to be working fine so I'm injecting 10 millivolts I'm testing at C605 positive side and I'm getting this waveform which is actually kind of right but wrong so the waveform shape is perfect but the amplitude is wrong the duty cycle is looking close to correct and the actual frequency is looking close to correct so that's measuring 71 Hertz interestingly that may not be too critical, I think, because it is just a pulsed waveform that's used in this chopper. So I think the frequency being a little bit off probably doesn't matter too much. The amplitude is higher than it should be, though. I mean, I'm using a different setup from what's in the manual. And no matter what I do, I'm getting a higher amplitude. I'm just trying to simulate what it may have been on the original test equipment when I did the original test, trying to find out what is going to generate the right results, because I'm getting higher amplitudes than expected. But otherwise, it seems right. So I'm using a one-to-one -one probe. We've got a 20 megahertz bandwidth limit to try and reduce noise because I've got some noise in one of the following steps which you'll see but this looks correct apart from the amplitude which I'm getting about 12.5 volts peak to peak and according to the manual it should be about 8 volts peak to peak so I'm getting 50% more than that which is interesting but again I think it comes down to their original test setup because I'm finding some discrepancies between how I have to do this versus what's in the manual in order to replicate the same kind of results it could just be nothing so the next step we'll go on to that now 
So if I can see that last test a pass, not a fail, that changes the route I was going down to try and find more information. One of the steps which I was going to, well, which I did try and do before, if I considered that a fail, which was going to step 12, and that actually resulted in some more discrepancies about what I was doing for the test setup. Was it step 16 I ended up on? Six, yeah, step 16 I ended up on. It says no probe required. What it means by that is actually a one-to-one -one probe. I was trying to figure out what that meant, and that's why I put the 20 megahertz bandwidth limit on because I found that actually made a difference as well. So I'm going to go to step five next and see how it comes up. Step five asks me to hook up to Q605 on the emitter, and I should be reading approximately minus 2.35 volts DC. Go back to 10 times sampling on the probe and everything, right? On the actual probe itself, so it's not loading it down, and we are actually getting something a bit different to that. 1.6 volts, not 2.35. So that's down somewhat, up somewhat, depends on your perception, I suppose. So that's not quite right. I'm injecting 10 millivolts. If we're going to change that voltage, changing this voltage, that's not changing at all. So it isn't to do with that. If I turn the input signal on, that has changed it slightly, so actually made it worse. So maybe I'll disconnect completely from the front panel. There's nothing on the front panel and I'll get a shunt to put it to ground. It seems to be just floating gently. So that looks like it's very slightly out there. Still coming back down. So the next step is actually showing as injecting 10 millivolts again. So I'm thinking that maybe that 10 millivolts should still be injected through that resistor. So that's what I've gone back to. I've just defaulted back to that. Now this is on the base of the transistor. So this is the next step which is to go on the base of Q605 and I should be getting a waveform there and I'm not and we're getting minus 2.23 volts that's what I should be getting on the emitter so I'm not getting a waveform here I'm just getting a flat line of minus 2.23 volts with 2 millivolts injected something's not right here okay I think I figured this out because this manual is slightly more recent than my actual unit here I did remember reading something about the actual transistors and the later models have got an extra transistor in there and so it references the transistors differently and it was Q604, Q605 which were referenced differently so if I look at this diagram which is the one which is actually used for this unit just here I can actually see that there's a difference so when it says referencing Q605 it actually means Q604 and when it says Q606 it means Q605 because in this earlier revision there's one less transistor it is a transistor before the demodulator so there's a slight discrepancy there between what actually has and what's discussed alright so I'm going to explain a bit better what I'm finding so a C605 right here I am seeing pulses so I'm seeing something here over here I'm seeing nothing here I'm seeing nothing I need to look into this some more but I would have thought that this would be doing something I'm not seeing the right stuff the manual here says that I should be seeing these pulses here like this I'm not getting that so that's curious and that is supposed to be on the base of Q604 well, it says Q605 in manual like I said but that's 604 here because it's off the other page which I'll show you for completeness so this is the original manual page like the one that's actually referencing here it says Q605, which is after the demodulator, right? Because this is what it's referencing, whereas this is the older version. Because this has got an extra transistor here. They've added in here to create a buffer. So because of that, it's added some extra complication. Yeah, I'm still not getting pulses here. I'm a bit confused by that. I made to research this some more just in this section, but I'm not seeing nothing here. I also check this connection here, nothing there. The only kind of pulse I'm seeing is on the input here, C605, the positive side of that. That's the only place I'm seeing any kind of pulsing. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I'll need to read this some more. I mean, it's a demodulator, so I think it should be going from pulses to a waveform. So why is it mentioning there being pulses here? I mean, it must be some kind of pulse, but maybe something's wrong here. Maybe this transistor here is gone. It's possible. So now I've figured out the right transistors to be probing on. I'm now hooked up to Q604, not Q605, on the emitter, which is as per step 5, and it says I should be getting around minus 2.35 volts DC, and I'm getting minus 2.23, so very close. It does say approximately, I think that's a pass. So step 6 says to check pin 9 of the A6 ball connector, so the actual edge connection inside the chassis here, and it's got a resistor going through to one of the adjustments. 
Um, so I've hooked onto that and it should be minus 1.65 volts approximately. I'm getting minus 1.533 or minimum of minus 1.633. Depends on the way you want to look at it, I suppose. Yeah, put it 1.633, I'd say that it actually is. So that's what I will base it from. So that is also a pass. So something to watch out for on this as a troubleshooting step. If you look down here, you see sort the of blue wires that go in, those are the photo resistors go in. And if you just look where they enter, you can just see the glow there. If I turn those lights off, maybe it should be a bit better. Hopefully you'll see it on camera. I'm not sure if you can or not because it's actually flashing. But each of those, you'll see, you can see at the bottom one of each of those at least, they're pulsing a little bit. You might, or it might be glowing, I'm not quite sure how it's going to count on camera. So that is that 50 hertz pulsing which is from the actual neons themselves. So the fact that you can see that glowing means the neons are working. That's one of the troubleshooting steps. You can see that, hey, that part is at least going. So basically this thinks that I need to check the thermocouples next. Okay, let's check the thermocouples out. So the first step is to remove the A6 ball, which I have done. And what we have to measure is between the end of these capacitors, so these capacitors here are joined together, this one here and this one here, and between those and ground. Between there and, say, here, I'm getting 97 ohms. And the manual says it has to be between 76.5 and 103.5. So that's smack in the middle of that, really. Well, it's towards the upper end, but that's fine. It's, that meets the criteria for that. So the actual thermocouples themselves potentially are okay. Whether the heaters are okay, it's a different story. So what I've got now is to check for a low voltage between pin 11 and 13 on the socket here for the A6 card. What it says to hook up to the test point I used before and injecting 5 milliamps of current and that's to provide heaters for the thermocouples, right? So the heaters on the thermocouples are getting 5 milliamps. And then you should be able to measure between 6.5 millivolts and 9 millivolts on those two connections down there. So I've got this set up, I've got my PDVST Mini generating a voltage because it's well controlled. So this is being fed through my Siglent SDM3065X multimeter. And what that is doing is giving me a current reading so I can actually see what the current is. It's currently 5.04 milliamps. So I've adjusted the PDVST Mini to be giving us 5.000 milliamps. Alright, so that's pretty precise. And uh, we shall check across these terminals and see what we're getting. 7.4 millivolts so that's within the range that's expected that looks okay as well curious and there you go there's a display over here see it's jumping around very slightly but it's basically bang on five milliamps so that first check there was to check the resistance of tc401 now we've got to do tc402 because there's obviously a pair of them we need to make verify that one's working correctly as well so i just need to measure resistance between the cow pot here, the silver wire, and pin 14 of the A6 board. That should be that same sort of reading I had before. 90 ohms, there we go, 90.6. It's very similar to the first one. So now I've got to measure the same two pins I did before, which is pin 11 and pin 13, to check for the voltage across the thermocouples again. And apparently it's got to be within 1 millivolt of the last one, slightly lower than that, apparently. Minus 7.9 millivolts. What did we get, 7.6 was it? Yes, I think it was 7.6. So that's fairly well balanced then. Apparently the final step is to check for short ground from the run of thermocouples with everything else disconnected. So this is between pin 11 and 14 of this socket. So that's 14. 509k. Yep, that's fine. It says anything less than 200 is a problem. 500 is okay. So that looks right. I can't afford the thermocouples. They look fine. So that basically means a run out of troubleshooting diagnostics information in the service manual here. So. I guess I'm on my own now. <laughs> okay, so things that uh, come to my mind. The test currents, right? It's using 5 milliamps test current through each thermocouple. I'm getting an offset. When I was doing the testing on the A6 board, injecting my own voltage, depending on what I injected there, I could actually get the needle move around. So the board did seem to be controlling properly, kind of. It could control and give a zero reading. It could do that. So it's not like it's got a shorted output or something like that on the board, which is causing that particular problem. It does have some kind of control loop going on. So with the different currents that go through these thermocouples, that's how it works. It's using the differential between those two thermocouples. And so one is positive based, one's negative based, and so they offset each other. Right? So if it's balanced, it's null. 
So what I'm thinking is maybe one of those currents that are passed through those heating elements in those thermocouples, maybe one of those currents is out of whack and that is causing that offset on here. So it's always reading a reading here because one of the currents are wrong. That makes me think I should be checking the feed to the heater circuits on these thermocouples because the thermocouples themselves, they look fine. So something controlling the thermocouples is probably the problem. I think that's where I need to look next. So that comes to the output of another board. I think the A2 board I think was one that controlled one of them and the output from the A6 board which I've already done some diagnostics on and didn't really come up with anything particularly inconclusive about anything. It seemed to be okay but I eh, don't know. Um, so it could be either of those boards. I think I'm going to have to try and find a way of intercepting the currents that go to those thermocouples and actually see what I can do to try and test them to see if I can see where the problem is coming from. One of those boards is not doing 5 milliamps. I need to figure out which one it is. Of course it still could be a problem on the ASICS board itself, it could be something to do with bad biasing resistor or something like that, so it's still a bit up in the air. I don't know exactly what I should be looking for yet. Now at least I've got an understanding of how it works, a bit more detail, the actual interrelationship between the boards, I've got a bit of a clue there now. It takes a while to absorb it sometimes. With that knowledge I now have an idea of what to look for, rather than just basically just following troubleshooting guides. I'm wondering if I should just go through and check all the resistors on this board and see if any of these resistors are out of whack because it could be causing a problem with biasing or something like that I'm thinking that's probably what I need to look at next yeah I think that's what my next step needs to be is just double check componentry on this board individual components, check resistors, make sure the values look about right within 10% because these are these old carbon composite ones and they can be problematic and they do drift off value with age so it could be that that's all it is so I've gone through and measured all the resistors on this board and basically they're all out by about 10% it's quite surprising. There's some which are okay, not many, but they're all basically reading about 10% up. And these are 5% resistors, so out of spec. So I'm going to have to replace a whole bunch of resistors. And this is basically what I've got. There's a few I couldn't actually measure. I couldn't get readings off them because obviously circuitry around them is affecting the readings. But yeah, there was quite a few which were out by basically 10% or maybe slightly more than that in some cases. But it's like 10% always high. Always 10% high. So yep, yeah, I'm going to have to replace a whole bunch of resistors. Yay. That's tedious. So I'm about three quarters of the way through completely replacing all the resistors on this board. I've done all the ones I identified apart from the 56 ohms because I don't actually have any 56 ohm resistors. I've got 51 and 61 or 62 or something. No 56s so I've had to leave those ones. Hopefully they're not too critical. I would like to replace them. i have to try and get some maybe. There's a good chance that resistors on all the other boards also need doing and that will take hours. But I'm just going to do this one, see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't make any difference, then it's probably a waste of time, of my time anyway. I mean, they're about 10% out, all of them about 10% out. And that may be enough to make a difference. Um, if I do another board, then it will be these two here. Right, if I do the other boards, it'll be those ones. I'll probably leave the power supply alone. It seems to be working fine. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is these optical pickups here. So you've got four of those sensors, these photoresistors, and the two neons in the back. And as you saw with the dimples there lighting up with the neons, the neons obviously working. The photoresistors I haven't checked individually. You can kind of check it. I mean, I did do a bit of video showing me testing them, and it all showed as being open circuit basically, which is actually normal. These ones are really sensitive. If there's no light, these are basically multiple mega ohms in resistance, a completely open circuit. But when you get light, they can drop right down to um, ohms even. I think hundreds of ohms, I think, is the lowest you can get out of them, something like that. So yeah, they are extremely sensitive. So testing them isn't easy. So it is responding to signals, it's just got some kind of biasing going on there, which is meaning it's you know got a half reading scale all the time. So I'm thinking maybe resistors are a problem, but anyway, I'll finish replacing the resistors, then I'll try the card again. I've got a better understanding of how this thing works now. Obviously when I first started doing this, I didn't really understand it. Now I've got a much better understanding of how it actually functions and the interrelationship between the cards. So that gives me a, a basis now for doing my own diagnostics where the manual was left off. So I can check certain points in the circuitry now and know what probably should be there and what shouldn't be there maybe. That gives me an opportunity to try and at least eliminate sections of the circuitry. It could be this board has got a problem, it could be a leaky transistor or something on here. Um, don't know yet, but I guess I'll find out. I'll get to the bottom of it, I really will. I always do. Interesting thing. This resistor just here, in the manual it says it should be about a 10 mega ohm, but it's also a factory selected value, that's R630 by the way. 
it says factory selected value 10 meg is the average value shown. I pulled the part out, measured it, it's 115k. Markings say it's 100k, so it's 15% out for a start. It's very short from 10 meg as per the manual, so that's quite interesting. Being a factory select value, I'm going to go with what was originally in there, the same value there. I'll put that in, and hopefully it's okay. But it may be affecting anyway, because I've already replaced this capacitor and stuff like that. And it may be affecting the resonance of that particular circuit, because that's the feedback, frequency stabilizing feedback here comes across between the two negatives of these photo resistors. And there is R6 City right there, 10 meg. So it's in its feedback path. And I've changed some capacitors, I've changed this one. So that may affect the resonance of this frequency anyway. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this, I might have to investigate this some more and see how flat it is once I do get it working. So I've pulled out this resistor here which is R623, it's basically a 390k, measuring 460. That's a little bit out. Right, that's all the resistors replaced, at least the ones I can do. I've only got those 56 ohms which I don't have, like I said. So I'm going to clean all the flux off the board and I'll try it again. So I think I might have just found something relevant. I'm hooked up to pin 11 on this connector in here, which is supposed to be the feedback output to the thermocouples. Right? So there should be some kind of voltage happening here from the thermocouples or to the thermocouples. I'm not actually seeing anything. Now it's got a uh, 470k resistor between this line and the adjustment for the 1 tenth scale pot. Now the one side of this has got 0.8 volts on it. I'll change over and I'll show you. Volts, right? Point eight volts. The other side, it's got nothing. So either that resistor is completely open, or it's being dragged down. So I showed a circuit I'm talking about here. This is the test point I'm using right here, right there, and there's that resistor I just checked. So one side over there is point eight volts, and this side is not zero volts. So this comes across here to that thermocouple there, right? Which is part of that series set. So that's the feedback loop back to the input, which I was measuring before, I was measuring this connection here, which comes down there. Right? So it's all feeding back to itself. So I'm getting a voltage or negative voltage here, but I'm not getting anything over here at all, which is curious. I'd expect to see something going on. So I think I need to look more detail here. I think I need to unplug this board and check again. If there's still nothing, then that resistor there is probably dead. I'll just put the probes across that resistor. I'm getting, what, 518 ohms. So something's going on. I need to take this card out. So now I've taken the board out, I'm getting 508k. So that is out of spec as well. So it should be 470, so it's out by 40k. Almost 10% again. Yeah, without the card in there, it's not being loaded down. So that's interesting. Something's loading it down. Well, this board here has got a 24.3 ohm resistor right there, which is across that connection on pin 11. That will be creating quite a load on it. And I've measured that resistor already, it actually measures fine. So, maybe it's normal. But I'm going to replace those resistors inside the casing here, because obviously these are off value. They're only changing, because it could be affecting it. So let's do some natural process testing, like actually go through with a signal being injected and see what we're getting at various points. Because I can't find an actual issue as such, right? I found various little things, no smoking guns with, you know, an obvious fault. So let's actually measure the input to this board here, which is the A4 board. So you've got the attenuators and stuff like this over here. It comes into this A4 board, and it's in process in this board a little bit. It's got the thermal couples on here, and then it's then sent out to the A6 board, which we've been working on already. So let's look at the input to the A4 board and see what we're getting with a 1 volt RMS signal input. This is on AC, right? AC. So we're probably on the input here, and we're getting 1 millivolt AC at the input. That's a 1 volt on the front panel. We go to 3 volts on the front panel, we'll do the same check. If it's working linearly, we should get 0.3 volts. And we are. Okay, so the input to this point, right there, from this little coax comes from this board, looks fine. So that basically eliminates all the front end stuff over here. Now we've got an understanding of what's actually going on. Up to this point, looks right as far as levels and stuff go. Assuming one millivolt is the correct level, I believe it probably is. So now what I'm going to do is going to measure the output of these capacitors here. These are what go to the thermocouples right here, the junction of these two capacitors. So I think it's 413 or 415 or something like that. 
So let's measure those again in AC. This is in the three volt setting with one volt being injected in. Getting about 85 millivolts. So three times that, was that about 265 or something? Is that right? No, maybe. <laughs> let's have a look what we get with, with one volt. 270, there we go, 270 millivolts. So the output of this board is also scaling correctly. So the input coming in looks about right. The output is scaling to three times it is on that one. So that board looks like it's kind of working as well. But is it right? So now we know we're looking for AC voltages at the output of here. Right, so 270 millivolts there. Let's actually check to see if we're getting an erroneous reading in a different range. So let's bring this right up. See what we're getting here now. So we're in about one millivolt with half scale. So I bring this back up to say 10 volts. 26 millivolts without any difference in meter reading. Up again. That's 85 we're getting. We're getting a slight difference in meter reading there. And 85. And obviously this one here, which is off scale, is at 270. So that basically says to me that the upper from this board is working correctly. This whole front end is looking right. So I think I'm chasing the right thing. We're looking at this A6 board because I think that is where the problem is.